In this video, we're going to examine reactions of primary amines and related nitrogen nucleophiles with an NH2 group with ketones and aldehydes. And these, in many ways, parallel the reactions of alcohols and water that we've seen in previous videos, but they have some unique aspects, mainly because of the extra proton on a primary amine and a tendency to form uh, different products than acetals, as we've seen previously. So, the punchline for primary amines is right here at the top of the slide. Primary amines condense with ketones and aldehydes to form what are called imines, and these are also known as shift bases. A water molecule is lost, so this is sort of analogous to acetal formation, but recall in that reaction we ended up with two CO single bonds. In this reaction we end up with a CN double bond, so two new carbon nitrogen bonds, but now it's a double bond rather than two single bonds, and a molecule of water is given off, and so this is commonly referred to as imine condensation, since a small molecule is given off. This is an example of a condensation reaction. Now, in the acetal formation reaction, we can use a small amount of a strong acid as a catalyst, HCl, H2SO4, or something like that. But in imine condensation, it is critical to use a weak acid, and acetic acid is sort of a standard that you can use when writing reagents and applying this reaction synthesis, so on and so forth. And the reason we need to use a weak acid is that strong acid will protonate the basic nitrogen of the, the amine reactant, completely shutting down its nucleophilic reactivity. So we want to use a weak acid that only protonates the amine nitrogen to a small extent, leaving most of it unprotonated and able to act as a nucleophile. Now mechanistically, this reaction follows the same basic pattern of acetal formation in terms of the nucleophile adds and then a molecule of water is eliminated with various proton transfers to shift protons into the right places. But imine formation is a bit different in that the order of steps is different. Because we're using a weak acid like acetic acid, protonation of the carbonyl group isn't really a reasonable first step. Instead, the amine can add directly to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and we end up with a Zwitter ionic species like this. Zwitter ionic means we have both negative and positive charges in the same molecule. It's not an illid because they're separated by one carbon, but it's known as a Zwitter ion. Now at this point, that negatively charged oxygen is basic enough to be protonated by the weak acid. Here I'm just representing it as HA. This could be HOAC in the event of acetic acid. And that proton transfer generates this positively charged species. And loss of a proton from the nitrogen, now mediated by the basic, for example, acetate anion, gives us a neutral species in which the elements of the amine, H and NHR, have added across the CO double bond. And this is called a carbonyl amine. And the reason it's called a carbonyl amine is it's a carbonyl. There's an alcohol bit, something resembling an alcohol, and amine because of the amine group here. So this carbonyl amine intermediate is analogous to a hemiacetal is how you can think about it, right? In a hemiacetal, this was an OR group. In a carbonyl amine, it's an NHR group. And as in acetal formation, the reaction doesn't stop here. It goes on because we still have acid around. It's still possible to protonate here and lose a molecule of water. In the next step of the mechanism, the carbonyl amine is again protonated, but at oxygen rather than nitrogen. Now, you may look at this and say, well, the oxygen is clearly not the most basic site in here, right? The nitrogen is more basic than the oxygen. That's true, but to a small extent, that oxygen will be protonated. And once water gets kicked off and a CN double bond gets established, the mechanism won't back up. We often remove water from the reaction mixture to facilitate this, since the overall reaction is reversible, this nucleophilic addition process and the ultimate substitution of a C double bond N for C double bond O is reversible. So at this point, now we have the nitrogen with a lone pair adjacent to this H2O plus group, which can act as a leaving group in a beta elimination sort of step. And this establishes the C and pi bond. What we have right here is known as an aminium ion. It's the protonated version of our final product. And so to get to the final product, well, we need to regenerate the catalyst. Notice we used up HA in this proton transfer step, so we've got A minus around. And we need to get a neutral organic product, and the neutral organic product has that CN double bond without a positive charge in the nitrogen now, since we've returned electrons to the N plus. And this product with a CN double bond, with this NR group replacing the carbonyl oxygen, is known as an imine. 
And one other important thing to point out here is that a molecule of water is lost at the beta elimination step. And so to drive this reaction forward, we often remove water through various experimental means to pull the reaction toward the amine side. So this reaction converts the carbonyl group into a CN double bond. And that's useful actually in the synthesis of amines, as we'll see when we look at reductive amination in another video. It's also useful for the synthesis of heterocycles containing CN double bonds, like pyridine and related heterocycles containing CN single bonds, as we'll see a, bit, a little bit later. So these condensations of amines with carbonyl compounds have great practical importance. Related nitrogen nucleophiles that contain an NH2 group can condense with ketones and aldehydes to form products that are structurally analogous to imines containing a new CN double bond. And three examples are shown on this slide. This nucleophile is hydroxyl amine. It's an amine with an attached hydroxyl group. And in the presence of an acid catalyst, which here we're representing just as H plus in brackets, we get this product with a CN double bond and an OH group linked to the nitrogen known as an oxime. And here that NH2 nitrogen is acting as the nucleophile. Carbonyl carbon is, as usual, the electrophile. And the elements of water are lost as the two H's off the nitrogen and the carbonyl oxygen right here. In the second example, we have this structure here, which is an example of a hydrazine in which there's a nitrogen-nitrogen bond and sort of a hanging, as I like to think of it, NH2 group here. In the presence of a ketone or aldehyde and an acid catalyst, these two reactants condense to form a hydrazone, which is an imine with an attached NHR group here. A molecule of water is tip likewise kicked off. And this is actually an important process that occurs during the Wolf-Kishner reduction of aromatic ketones, which we saw in the context of electrophilic aromatic substitution and functional group interchange reactions of uh, aromatic substituents, substituents on benzene rings. This last reaction looks a little funky. This nucleophile is known as a semi-carbazide. It's got an NH2 group with an attached, this looks like a urea group linked to the NH2. It's this hanging NH2 that's the nucleophilic nitrogen, and that can condense with a ketone or aldehyde to form a product known as a semi-carbazone. Notice the ide to own um, nomenclature applies uh, here, similar to the case above, where the own is the condensation product. And a, a molecule of water is kicked off. And the only reason I mention this one is it's an old school method for melting point determination, converting a ketone into its semi-carbazone. And the semi-carbazone is often a nice crystalline solid whose melting point is easy to measure. And the melting points for a large number of semi-carbazones have been measured over the years. So all of these condensation reactions work on the basic principle that H2O can be eliminated when a primary amine or an NH2 nucleophile condenses with a ketone or aldehyde.